Hey folks, this is Lucid. Welcome back. We've got another turn for you here with Lemuria. And, uh, yeah. It's an interesting one. So, uh, Spring of Year 2, I forget exactly what turn number it is. Uh, let's go check out some of these battles here. Here we raid into the- this is the PD on top of, uh, Bogorus's leftmost, uh, leftmost fort. And we're basically just locking down mage production if we can. Basically being a little shit. <clears throat> so we've got that happening. Over here... Uh, we have Flegra's main army, and it is rolling out, and it's moving into the forest. To my forest. Well, not to mine. But to Sertoma's. Now, Sertoma has the, uh, the Agarthan Forged Elemental Armor. Yes. And he has the Shield of Valor made by my pretender. And he has a Dusk Dagger because, well, you know, gods and stuff. So... This is not the ideal weapon for this particular situation, but the other two things are. Um, on this side, we have Felegra with about 100 crossbows. Uh, this guy with some earth gems. This guy... <coughs> with no gems. These are priests. Now, the question is... What do those... Are those priests on advance and cast spells or not? I'm not sure. He's got these guys who are going to uh, Phoenix Power and then do Lesser Fire like this. Okay, these guys are doing Blessing. I hope he's on Advance and Cast Spells so he actually does Banishment. I don't know, they're going to sit behind these guys and do nothing because they're in range. So the Banishment I don't think is going to make a huge difference, but anyway. Uh, we have the Mufalon Charge, and the Mufalon Charge has done jack shit. Um, but we have Fire Elementals closing in, and Sertoma is ready to go. Now, Sertoma has 22 defense. This is after a 3 harass penalty. We also have our PD up here, being a boss. These Elementals are not distracted by, by PD. And they are going to run right in. Now, there is going to be a big difference between this time and last time, because 5 and 10 Fire Resistance are very different from fighting lesser Fire Elementals as a thug. see him chopping his way. Now the Dusk Dagger again, not exactly ideal, but it is magic. If we didn't have any weapon, he would kill these guys more slowly. Uh, and we have a Fire Elemental that uh, introduced himself to our PD. We have the Mufalon charging out. Crossbows coming in. Not hurting Valik. I mean not Valik, Sertoma. Uh, because Sertoma has 23 protection and air shield. And we can see the, the arrows coming in, just reducing anything that stands near Sertoma. Uh, now, as they get closer and they start to surround him, I love this change. And I think it was a change from Dominions 4 to 5. I don't remember them doing this before, but... Um, how they run in like this and get close, I just think that's so, so great. You know, they realize that there's enough uh, kind of friendly units around. They don't want to cause friendly fire, and so they walk in and get closer. Very nice. Now, you may be thinking, oh shit, there's an earth elemental. He's getting trampled. He may not make it. No, no, no. Sertoma has the situation well in hand. So I want to just reflect back, guys. We were doing our pretender design, and we were like, man, you know how we're going to get ganged up on early? Like, we don't really want our ghost to fight this army. Really, we want this army to go away without us having to sacrifice ghosts to it. Uh, because it doesn't look like they got flaming arrows off here, so we actually kind of would have been okay. <coughs> actually, we would have been okay. But presumably, had he gotten flaming arrows off, it wouldn't have mattered for fighting. I mean, this fight wouldn't have... I mean, it would have actually been good for me, because I'm immune to flaming arrows, but it would have killed his frontline stuff a little faster. Now, some of these guys are running. 
But going all the way back to Pretender Design, we knew people would charge us, and we knew these consoles were going to be what was going to keep us in the game, uh, in the mid-game while we teched up. And by tech up, I mean research slower than every other player. And there we go. This guy casting slime from back here. These guys running off the battlefield. Sertoma chasing madly after them. Come back here, you, you youngins. Think you can sit on my porch and shoot arrows at me? Oh no, you're getting off my porch. Okay, he doesn't want this, uh, this is easy kill back, back here. He's gonna do, oh, he sprints and gets him. Very nice. Now with that, Sertoma has gotten a lot of kills. 63, so he has cemented himself well within the Hall of Fame. And he has the uh, Extraordinary Agility ability, which is quite nice for consoles. It means we can double equip him and he doesn't get uh, a penalty, which is always really nice. Um, yeah, so anyway, pretty wonderful. Um, so that was huge. That basically means he has no shot at getting us off his capital. But uh, was that a bad move? No, not really. I mean, he's playing to try to kind of win. I mean, I think it's like dreams of survival are drifting away now. But, you know, he was trying to clear out his cap circle because he figured... You know, maybe wait a turn or two before he actually has to knock me off his cap, and he might catch some more of my guys running around. <coughs> but uh, this turns out to be a wonderful win for Sertoma, and a wonderful win for Lemuria. Now, uh, if we'll notice, uh, there's about 100 units here who retreated. And if you'll notice here, there's about 60, which means most of... And this scouting report could be wrong, but I think... I think a lot of them didn't make it. A lot of them didn't make it. And the odds are, I don't exactly know the math, but the more provinces you control around the province that got retreated from, the less likely you are to actually, you know, survive. So, yeah, that's basically that. Um, this army is now out of gems, so he has no way of getting the mages in this army onto this fort with gems. <coughs> Which means, and we didn't pop this for it, unfortunately, but we'll finish going through the, uh, the battles. Uh, we have a battle here in where we're going to actually bump them. So Marignan's getting all fired up that they have a new neighbor, and they are eager to vulture uh, and get some of them spoils, which I would be too. And um, anyway, they're going to charge in here. Now these halberdiers, they hurt. 22 damage, and it's going to go through the little protection we have, but it's going to miss a fair amount. Anyway. We're not going to make it as the short story. They've got some meteorite guard here, too. And the meteorite guard will tear me, tear me up something fierce. Oops. Look at the volume right. So now that he's surrounded, that's particularly bad news. Okay, and he's the only one left, and now he's dead. Well, you know, those Centurions, they're, uh, they're there to be used up. Um, so anyway, we lost this battle, which is annoying. But of note, there's no real mage support. The only thing here with magic weapons is the Meteorite Guard. So this actually, we want to run an army into this. Um... Anyway, the only reason he, and look, we traded almost evenly, even though we were just horrendously outnumbered. So, uh, with the proper force, we would wreck that. That is the kind of, those are the kind of armies you do want to put your ghosts, or bull your ghosts into. Okay, here you can see we're kind of stretching out the field. Okay, and then they run. Perfect. We lost one guy. Uh, we took control of Imicton, which is, uh, this is his fort right here. So we just moved some guys on top of it. Perfect. And uh, there's also a battle here in Behemoth's Rest. So Bogarus is moving out. They have uh, a brave army, which is marching south. I don't know if he has intention of, has the intention 
of meeting us on the uh, the field of war. But this is an army that will be difficult for me to deal with. It, it doesn't have a huge front line. <coughs> so it'd be pretty easy to flank. Uh, and we could take this out with the, you know, like a 250 size ghost army ideally. I wouldn't really want to throw 100 ghosts at it. I feel like 100 would just kind of die. But anyway. They, um... Yeah, they move in here. Um, and this is, we'll just show you what this is. This is right here. So they're moving south. And uh, finally, we have a battle for the throne. Uh, and we were going to send in somebody with like a kit that would actually kill it. And then I was like, well, I don't actually know how we're going to do versus some linemen because they have this fatigue attack. And it doesn't affect, I don't mind these guys. It doesn't affect inanimate, but I don't remember if it, I think it affects undead that aren't inanimate, but I'm not sure. Anyway, I didn't want to get fatigued out and have him die. And I didn't know what these guys were going to cast or... I was basically being lazy. So, and they've got these guys with magic weapons that don't do much damage. But uh, anyway, all that, I basically decided to send Bobo in. Uh, and Bobo completely unarmed. Like, no no additional gear. Um, and so anyway, the hordes of the throne are closing around him. And uh, these guys do not have cold resistance. So hopefully we free some of these and we form a nice little protective barrier around them with our chill aura. Um, but we're taking some hits, but it's okay. Got the archers kind of shooting at him, but he's fine. Now, back here, they're summoning some stuff. I think this guy's summoning air elementals when he can. Yeah, you can see the summon air elementals up here. And so they're back here. Now, these air elementals... I'd be less excited if they attacked me. Now, they're going to trample and cause a fair amount of damage. I don't think one air elemental will kill me, but they'll definitely do more damage than, you know, a normal square of dudes attacking him. And then if I ever chop him down, I think he would still survive. Like, right now, there's just trivial for him. He's just sitting here. It's like max HP. Hardly ever, You hardly ever see the, the regen. The regen finally ticked. And we'll just speed through this, because he's basically going to sit here. Most of these are swarm bugs he's going to kill. Because uh, only swarm bug can fit through. Like, if he kills one swarm bug, it's only going to be, like, a size one spot. So more swarm bugs are going to fill in. Anyway, he'll just sit here killing swarm bugs. Um, occasionally getting the, the shit smacked out of him. Uh, now he is routed. And because he's routed, he's actually at risk of dying. Um... But there, he goes back up, because his defense stat gets kind of wrecked. So it's a, it's a little close. Um, yeah, see there, he's getting low again. So this, this part, he was really kind of living on the edge. But now, the enemy routes. And what happens when the enemy routes is all these guys who are mindless, which is like, uh, these guys and these guys, they all start disintegrating. Uh, and the commanders are running off the field. I think they're already off. Uh, and now he is finally broken free and he's running off, but all the enemy commanders have run off the field. So what does that mean? It means this is now a free province to take. I could send a scout in. So we actually basically cleared the throne with a naked console. Um, okay, so for events, we have a uh, my, uh, unrest and minus population event, fine. Uh, plus province income, very nice. Uh, we get some order and unrest, don't care. Earth gems, very nice. Treasure has been found. Boots of the Messenger, very nice. And, uh... <sighs> this will probably be mostly useful just for moving people from A to B. Like, moving people between labs and... Anyway, I can definitely see myself using this. Um... We got 400 gold, which of course is nice. And then the air, water, and earth. And there's a worldwide event where conjuration rituals are cheaper, which guess who's definitely casting a conjuration ri uh, ritual? This guy. Um, meanwhile, we finish a bunch of things. The walls in Falegra are critically damaged. More time is required to break them down. Um, so, uh, what we are doing is we're going to send this guy in uh, to clear out the throne. 
And uh, he's just going to be on a little hold, hold, hold attack closest action. That should clear it out. We'll see what throne it is. This Bogorusian army is going to... It's going to cause some trouble uh, with me trying to build a fort on this throne. I'm basically going to have to probably kill it. Uh, but fortunately, we have a plan. Um, so his plan this time is, hey, I'm going to astropologist you. And uh, we're not excited. We don't like it. But we will suffer through. And the way we're going to suffer through is with copper plate. And copper plate is special because it's only 13 protection, so this part kind of sucks, but it's actually the same protection as our kind of vanilla armor. Um, but it gives us 25 shock resistance. And if we look at Thunderstrike, Thunderstrike is 26. So it's going to mostly negate the Thunderstrike damage. Now, why is that important? Well, these things aren't going to hit terribly regularly. They're only going to hit, you know, every other, every few turns. Like maybe every like, I bet you we don't get hit more than every six turns. And so then if we take a little bit of chip damage from it every time we get hit, we're going to be fine. The Getting shocked or whatever will not be wonderful. But I think this in and of itself is going to make us mostly immune to, uh, to Thunderstrike. Um, so we've got that going on. Uh, we've got another army coming in hot over here. So that's going to be a little annoying. He's not one, two, three. He's not going to be able to get to the capital in time. Because next, time, next turn we're going to storm the capital. Um, what else? In other news, we have found Atlantis. Uh, Atlantis, he's got a fort here. He's got uh, some dudes here. And Atlantis has been telling everybody how they want to kill me. They're just so excited about getting to fight me. Um, they don't know what to do with themselves. Um, they were trying to use it to talk their way out of a war, which they would almost certainly lose with Pythium, by saying, hey, 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 don't fight me. I'm going to fight... Uh, Lemuria and at the time they didn't even have a border with me but I kind of knew that we would probably have a border if they took this throne which they did so anyway now we technically have a border but now you have to say you're Atlantis you know Bogarus isn't gonna fall Marignan's not anywhere close to falling so then you're like trying to wage this war through this one little thing um, now there's a lot of reasons why it's going to be hard for me to kill uh, Atlantis. One of the reasons is he has Death Mages. And what Death Mages can do is they have a few spells that are going to make me very sad. One is Dust to Dust, and this is 22 armor negating damage. Um, it's going to miss a fair amount, but it doesn't have to hit many times uh, to make my Grand Lemurs extremely sad. Um, and there's nothing I can do to block it. Not that I can think of. It's magic. It's armor negating. Uh, yeah. There's, there's nothing I can do. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think there's any way to deal with this efficiently. So having death mages in your army makes it very difficult to, uh, to thug. In fact, Bogaru says death mages. Um... Bogarus has these guys, the occultists. So these guys just on advancing cast spells are occasionally going to dust to dust, and it would make it like the thing is, you see me gearing up uh, to deal with the thunderstrike spam. Um, but I can't gear up to deal with dust to dust. Like, there's no way. I can send a thug in against people dusted. Like, four, three death mages dust to dusting will just murder any console no matter what gear I put on them, basically, that I can think of. Um, now, it's possible, as always, that I, I haven't thought of things. But in general, kind of, there are some spells which hard counter on dead thugs. Um, now, getting them in position to do to hit him with dust to dust is a little tricky because it's kind of short range. It's 30. Um, there are other spells we have to worry about, too, which are similar Wither Bones is one. And this one is less damage, but it's a big area of effect. Um, so better versus my, my ghosts, actually, than my, my consoles. But yeah, this guy is going to wreck us. What are all the other spells that wreck Lemuria? 
Um, another one is maggots, which I forget where maggots is. Yeah, here, con conjuration. This is going to do 50 armor negating damage, uh, but ethereal guys can block it. So we've got like a, you know, 75% chance of blocking it just from being ethereal, which is nice. And I think uh, like our air dudes can do mist form and stuff, and that will kind of help. Um, so yeah, that's maggots. That is going to be annoying. The other one, which is really annoying, is the ravenous swarm. And this is going to basically, if they cast, this is actually really good to cast. Uh, once this comes up, it's very hard for me to use thugs, because basically it's going to be seven armor negating holy damage, um, and it's going to only target undead. Uh, and it, it's just, that's a, just a tremendous amount of damage. Now, I can kind of counter this, because it's not a phenomenal amount of damage, so I can kind of counter it by having multiple dudes. Same way I can kind of counter uh, dust to dust by having multiple dudes. Is it only, oh no, it's an area of effect. No, that doesn't counter that, fuck. Well, I could have multiple dudes, but just not have them in the same tile and hope the same one doesn't get repeatedly dust to dusted. But that's like a little bit grasping at straws. Uh, but fear not my friends, because we are well on our way to uh, enchantment six. We're already up at 250. Like our research is going bonkers. Just bonkers. Look at this. Look at this. Like we actually have okay research now. Like it's only turn 25. This is, we are probably in terms of research per turn, not the worst out of all of the nations uh, which are not about to be knocked out. So like not counting Flegra and stuff. Um, and then Midgard, who's basically been knocked out now. Not counting those guys. We are probably still, we are probably not the worst in terms of research per turn. I mean, we're bottom freaking tier, but I bet you we're not the actual worst. In terms of the research graph, we're still the worst, but the angle, this, the slope of the research graph, we're probably not the worst anymore. And this is just gonna be getting better every turn. We've got the bats coming out. We've got the adepts coming out. Um, this guy is forging a copper plate this turn, uh, and so he'll have to turn on kind of in a turn or two for uh, for actual duty, but um, for research duty. But yeah, feeling pretty good. Um, now, what do, uh, what do we do? Because this army's basically been spanked. Uh, I think his pretender god... I think he went to hide in this fort. Now, he probably should have moved and patrolled on this fort because he would have won this battle. And uh, anyway, this fort would be free. But it doesn't really matter. Um, so the questions are, uh, Bogarus is moving out. This squad, too, is actually a little spicy. They've got uh, a five-fold angel. Let me click this. Uh, a similar number of astropologists. Uh, these guys, uh, the Holy Two dudes. Uh, basically just a lot of dudes. Uh, and we're all out. The other thing is we're almost, um, enchantment four. Which means we get anti-magic. Which means I don't have to mess around or muck around with that, uh, uh, protection of the sepulcher garbage, where that's, uh, MR... Or it's a spell I cast on my own troops that's MR negates. So anyway. Oh, Master of Names, these fuckers. Let's see what, what randoms he's pulling in here. Didn't even see those. Air random. Air random. Air random. Oof. I mean, we would crush this. To be fair. This army got to do a number on them. Now, uh, the questions, the questions are, what do we do? Um, I'm pretty sure round two of the coalition is going to be Marignan, Atlantis, and Bogarus versus me. Uh, I don't know if Arco will join it. If Arco joins in, then I'm going to keep raiding and stuff, but I, really, I'm not going to own most of this. All this stuff right here, which I'm kind of quote unquote, like, I have right now is not going to be mine for much longer. 
Um, so it's actually really important we get all of this stuff forted up all the way out to Filegra uh, as soon as we can. So one of the things we're doing this turn is we've just started fort construction here. And this will provide a connection to Filegra's cap. Um, so anyway, we've got that. <coughs> what else? We've got uh, these forts coming up here. I haven't started a fort here. But honestly, I should think about doing this next turn. So I think we're going to send somebody here. And then, if when we're done, I've got this forted, this forted, this forted, this forted, this forted, this forted, this forted. Well, actually, we'll be okay. I'll be kind of, I'll be fine with this. Um, this stuff I would like to have forted, and this I would like to have forted too. But I'm kind of feeling like that may not happen exactly. Uh, well, not by the time I want it to happen, or not by the time I want it to happen. So anyway, I think we're about to be in a 3v1. I have a feeling that Agartha may have made peace with these guys. I don't know. Got a fair amount of guys here. Maybe I need to give Agartha some... Actually, I don't really know how to fight Bogarus as Agartha. I guess he just out skellies. <coughs> Try to out skelly spam him. I don't know. Um, okay. So what else? Um, these guys... So I think there's a pretty good chance... He hasn't outright attacked me, but we've bumped a couple times now. So he either moved... I think this army's going to pop this fort this turn. And there's only 250. He's got 170 on top. Almost, he didn't quite pop it this turn, but I think he'll pop it next turn. Um, I bet you Atlantis attacks me here or here. And I bet you this army moves in here or it moves in here. Um, which, speaking of which, I probably should abandon some of this. I don't I don't really want these guys to die. I kind of want to reload them. I think we're going to send these guys home and pick up more troops. But we'll leave a guy on top to keep the fort pinned in. See what they move out. So the, I think this army is probably going to move on here. But there's also a chance he's like, well, I'm not technically attacking you. I'm going to attack Flegra, and he moves here. If he moves here, we're going to have a little surprise welcoming committee for him, welcoming to welcoming him to the lands of Lemuria. Uh, and we'll basically attack right here. And we'll probably kill this with, like, 40 or 50 losses, if that. Just wipe all these guys out. Uh, and we'll have plenty of guys uh, which we have left behind. Do we need this guy here? Private Plumpkit. I feel like he would actually be... There's no real sacred units here. I feel like Private Plumpkit... I feel like we bring him over here too. And... I think instead... <coughs> I think he basically is going to do this. No, I think actually he's going to just do Unholy Blessing and attack closest. And then I think these idiots, we'll put one of them right here. Okay, good, you are right here. So this guy is going to do Unholy Power. And then this idiot, who's also going to be right here, is going to do Unholy Protection. Okay, perfect. Um... If he attacks here, this army is going to get absolutely demolished. If he brings both of these, it'll probably be a good fight, but I think we'll probably still win, depending on the mage support he has. Um, but I think it would be good before we're like technically in a war uh, to go ahead and knock him down a size uh, and take some of these units off the table.
But the real threat to me is Atlantis. So what matters there more is Dipl like I really don't want to fight Atlantis because he basically has all the tools that are going to fuck me. Um, magic weapons on all his troops. The only thing I can do that is going to be really funny is I can still. I very soon I'm going to be able to foul vapors him, which I'll be able to foul vapors everybody who attacks me because uh, I have it on my god. Um, I just need. Uh, level 5, which I'm quite close to. I think this was like 400 research um, to get to 4. And what? let's look at all of what's being opened up in 4 too. We've got uh, Flaming Arrows, which I can actually cast with my god, uh, and that will give me Flaming Javelins, which is not something people are going to expect. Uh, Anti-Magic we get, which is pretty nice. Um, Cloud trapeze. If we do an air empowerment on one of our uh, dust, on one of our grand lemurs, twice born for my god. Once we start using them in combat, I'm going to do that. Uh, Behemoth always good to have on hand, and uh, yeah, five. We're going to be getting um, can't use that, not yet. Um. Yeah, basically foul vapors. That's really the only thing. Um, Ritual of returning actually is potentially nice on uh, on grand lemurs. If I'm doing magic phase uh, baits with them, I don't. When did I get? Oh, I don't have teleport yet. Uh, but six is when I get a lot of the good stuff. All right, that's rigor mortis. Um, reanimate archers if I want to. This is not a random that Grand Lemurs get, but I can do it with my god if I particularly felt like it. Which I won't. I'm not going to spend Death Dreams on it. Um, yeah, Group of Winner. I get the domes too. Frost Dome, Air Dome, which probably won't need, but you never know. Uh, Aerofend also super useful, which uh, I actually can do with uh, my Air Random Grand Lemurs. And if they die after they cast it, it's not a big deal. They just, you know, they get it off and the army's buffed. So this will really put a hurting on anybody trying to do some kind of archery strat against me. Um, but yeah, and it, they basically just do Power of the Spheres and drop two air gems on this. And uh, forget about Flaming Arrows at that point. Now, we're I think we're ahead of schedule. Uh, because we've gotten pretty lucky with um, Acolyte spawning. I think we got like two this turn rather than the one per and I think we got two last turn rather than the one per turn we would expect to get so we're a little ahead of schedule um, which means I think we will have it done by turn like 31 or something so in like six more turns um, though it could be a bit later we'll see uh, okay so yeah we're moving here we've got most of our army still sitting on this uh, on Felegra's cap our siege strength here is 750 we did probably about 150 Siege Strength before that, so there's probably only about 100 Siege Strength left. And you can see we're going to leave well more than than that to uh, to finish off Flegra here. Um, interestingly enough, his god probably won't be able to make it, because uh, his god is not here or here, his god is in here. So his god is going to be basically trapped out of his capital now. Because um, he will, you know, get his god off this turn out of this fort, presumably. Uh, which, funnily enough, if this guy goes and attacks here, uh, he might not know that Flegra's god is actually in this fort and is probably going to break out. And Flegra's god will most likely kill this whole army. I don't think this god, this army has the ability to kill it, and uh, they are not going to be nearly as resistant to trample as my ethereal troops. So that would be hilarious if these guys go on top of this fort, like claiming it, and then yeah, we get uh, we get a little bit of walloped. Um. So yeah, the the Atlantis factor I think is the the new scary part of this this whole engagement. So, but fortunately, we're only a turn or a turn or two away from uh, taking Flegger's capital. Then we'll have this. And, uh, yeah, things are looking pretty good. Where will this army go? Oh, God, I have no idea. If I were him, it doesn't even matter. He's so screwed at this point. 
There's nothing he can really do. What I would probably do is just march them on top of my capital, have all my cap-only mages stick their head out and be like, huzzah, here we go, we'll make some fire elementals at you. Um, but yeah, it's over. The The war with Flegra has basically been decided. Uh, it was decided here by Sir Toma. And uh, that is about that. But the war with... Uh, Marignan and with Atlantis has just begun. What I I don't know what I'll do. On one hand, this is just I will pick Marignan apart if we get a war. But on the other hand, I don't want to do that unless Atlantis is already in a war with Pythium. But Marignan actually is possibly a better war target than Bogarus. The only thing that makes Bogarus a better war target is he's closer to my supply base, like where all my troops are going to come from. So just to get raiders out in this direction, I've got to spend a lot of turns. And then, like, my consoles die, it's going to take a lot of turns to get them back out. You know what I mean. Um, <coughs> so, uh, that is about that. What is this guy doing? Okay, wait, you don't need this. You do need to get this guy back home. How many turns on this? Two? Okay, we'll go ahead and move Death Jest to at least some place he can build a lab. Uh, we're upgrading this for two months left. Oh, importantly, uh, our Dominion strength ticked up this turn because we built that final temple. We're at 15. Uh, and then I think, let's see how many we have in the makings. We have a fort coming up here and here and here. Right, one, two, one, one, two, three. This is four. So if I get one fort built here or here, <coughs> no, if I just take Flagger's capital, that'll be five. So anyway, we're well on our way to getting Dominion Strength 10. Uh, we can see we already, our cap already bumped up to 9. That, and that's still at 8. Yeah. Army graph, real quick. The all-important army graph. I'm marching steadily upwards. I bet you the next highest nation is like right here. We are getting out of freaking control. I haven't hardly lost any troops yet. I just haven't, I've tried to, when I can, use my uh, my consoles to do heavy lifting, uh, and in this case it's really worked out. So, um, yeah, I think this is going pretty damn well. Pretty damn well. The other thing I'd like to know... If he moves here and I kill this army, I potentially could just run on top of this. I think he had a little bit of mage support, but not much. And if you can, if you think even for a minute you can fight Lemuria without mage support, oh my god, are you mistaken? Palace guards. Let's go back in time real quick. This doesn't have palace guards, does it? Okay, not sacred. What are Lemuria's sacred true? Uh, not Lemuria. A uh, royal guard. No, they're not sacred either. The oh, hands of justice. They don't have magic weapons. Okay, well, of course they don't have magic weapons. So they don't have sacreds. <coughs> oh my god. Don't do it, man. I, I don't know how many mages or like priests he has, but even priests aren't going to matter. You know, there is a chance he takes the any priests he has here and brings them over here. I think, like, okay, Private Plumpkit, we have changed your plan a little bit. Um, you're basically just going to do protection of the Shadelands. And advanced cast spells. 
We'll move these guys back. Do I have these guys? Attack rear, attack rear, hold an attack rear, hold and fire, we'll do that. Yeah, these guys are going to be in trouble. But if we run into this army, they're screwed too. This is just... How many guys is this? 60, uh, 140, 220, 260, 320, about 320 dudes. Yeah, they'll just absolutely wreck these guys. I'll probably take like 50 losses. If he moves here, he gets hopefully the god. If he moves here, he might bump Atlantis. Yeah. Anyway. So this turn, hopefully we, because th there's not a lot of safe moves for this army. If we get attacked here, I actually do want to retreat. Put you guys all back here. Okay. We are going to haul ass out of here. The other thing I'm doing is I'm taking these guys. Like, the odds of this guy not attacking and just sitting here are very low. So we're going to go ahead and send these guys in. What I imagine... We'll see how he's feeling. If he's feeling aggressive, he's going to take these guys and march this way. If he's feeling defensive, he's going to take these guys and march this way and this guy and march this way. Either way, we'll get these guys back in his back lines and they'll run around, go sit on top of forts and stuff. And, you know, just generally slow down the, uh, the Bulgarian war fleet. Cause trouble back here, keep them from rolling out into our lands. Um, we had this scout here who I think I'm going to actually have him hide, but he, I do really want to build a fort here because that will potentially give me access to this throne. Which thrones could it be? Here's the hall of fame, by the way. Thrones of Ascension. Okay. It could be the throne of fortune or misfortune. It could be the outer throne. These are all astral gems, which would be nice. This one we already know that's going to be ours. The Throne of Fire is the one I really, 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 really want. Really want. The Throne of Air I also would like. So the Throne of Fire or Air would be the best. The Silver Throne's already spoken for. It's by Gath. And this one's underwater. So, and this one's ours. So... We'll see which one it is. We'll see also which ones these guys claim. Because this is one of the thrones which potentially I can get. Anyways, uh, I think that's it for the turn, folks. It looks like this went uh, about as well as it could, this war with uh, Flegrin Bogarus. And uh, we are well on our way to becoming an absolute... GD nightmare to deal with. Aren't you excited? The other thing I'll just mention is we're, ta we're taking some of these guys who were getting spirits and we're gonna, you really have to use these guys for logistics. So we're gonna be running them around, picking up troops, shuffling them off. I probably, I probably need to build a lab here. We might. Do I want to set up? I think it's more important right now to get this infrastructure up than it is to do labs. But I, I've got a lot of troop build up over here. I need to get... Okay. You, buddy, are going to go pick up some troops. We should leave these guys here. Go pick up troops over here. And you need to go pick up troops over here. 
And we're going to funnel these up towards... This is a peaceful front. I don't want to look scary to Agartha. I don't want it to be look... I don't want it to look completely vacant either. But we're going to try to shuffle them off before... Because we need them too. But we want to shuffle them off to Theaters of War where they'll be useful. Uh, and then hide. Perfect. I'm okay keeping a big stack of dudes inside this... Uh, this throne, though. We don't want anybody thinking they can come take our golden throne. So, uh, with that, thank you all for watching. I will see you next time. Cheers.